Let's bring in Anastasia Amoroso of iCapital, chief investment strategist there. It's good to see you here. Good to see you, Scott. What's your reaction to that? I was kind of surprised to hear him say that. I was surprised given the number of calls that we saw for zero uh, increase, zero rate increases. But actually, if you think about it, maybe it's not all that surprising. The reason the Fed, the FDIC, and all the other policymakers stepped in so quickly, so swiftly, is because we're, they're trying not to give up on the inflation battle. So what they're trying to say, look, we've sort of stabilized in their minds the banking system because all the depositors, whether explicitly or implicitly, have all of their uninsured deposits guaranteed. So that helps. And at the same time, the banks who need the extra liquidity, they have this new facility. So that should ring fence the, the regional banking sector so they can say, look, this financial instability situation should be stabilized. And at the same time, you know, we get the CPI report tomorrow. They're probably looking for some easing in CPI, but not enough. So they can still, you know, have the reason to raise rates 25 basis points. So I think that's why that we saw the swiftness of the response. I almost feel like, and I'd like your opinion to this, that why wouldn't the CPI, which is so backward looking at this point, be irrelevant, just given the dramatic developments of the last few days? Who cares what the, the CPI says for, for last month? Yeah. We had a, a, a crisis on our hands, and we may still be in it, and we seriously don't know the full outcome right. or ramifications from what's just happened. I mean, the reality, this is a coin toss as far as 0 to 25 basis points goes, because so much could still happen between now and next week. And, you know, you're right to say that the CPI is, is sort of a nuisance when it comes to the totality of the financial dislocation. I think there's also a chance that the Fed can say, look, you know, the cost of, you know, the opportunity cost of increasing 25 basis points is just not that great when we have already raised rates by 475 basis points. So why not wait and why truly see this financial situation stabilize? So maybe the, the decision maker is going to be what do the regional bank stocks actually do? Does the price action stabilize uh, into the FOMC meeting? And perhaps if it does, then we go for the 25 basis points. But if not, you look at credit spreads, you look at equity prices, and perhaps you do pause. I think everybody who comes on you know, needs to be asked the same question of, does your investment playbook change today relative to where it was not even a week ago? Let's put ourselves on the aftermath of Powell on the Hill, higher, faster, for longer. Here we may be in a different environment. Has your own thought process changed on that? Uh, it hasn't much at this point, Scott, because of how quick the response has been. My thought process is that the S&P can hang around these current levels, and I don't think the recession is imminent at these level of rates. Look, this economy can withstand five, maybe five and a half percent rates, and I'm not talking about these locations we're seeing now. I'm talking about the consumer. For example, the fact that the consumer has $17 trillion of cash on the balance sheets and they're getting paid close to five percent, that's why they're pulling money out of some of these banks. You know, that's a big stabilizer for the economy. So I don't think we have to have a recessionary multiple. And the reason why we're seeing the price reaction we're seeing in the markets, and maybe gives me a little bit more confidence, is if the Fed pauses or if the Fed steps down to 25 basis points, that's good for multiples. That's uh, that, that's good for earnings as well. Well, I mean, so, Gunluck, you heard him say that it might be good for, you know, if they do nothing, yeah. it might be good for risk, risk assets. That's right. I, I mean, this is an incredibly uncomfortable environment for investors because you really have to look at it week by week, month by month, and you can't really kind of, you know, play this out six months from now. Near term, I do think this is the economy that, by the way, stabilizing and consumer sentiment is picking up, maybe last week notwithstanding, um, you know, and this is maybe somewhat inflationary. So I think risk assets can at least stay stable. But at the same time, we know what happens next. You know, if, if things are so stable indeed that inflation is going to start heat back up and especially in the second half of the year, and the Fed will have to say this economy can stand 5% rates, let's go to 65 And so that's the risk that's looming out there. So I wonder if that risk, frankly, is off the table, given what we just saw happen from all that they've done, whether the highest calls for the six, and in some cases you've even had someone suggest seven in the last six months, that that scenario is off the table completely. I, I mean, the market would tell you that. The market are pricing in rate cuts in July, but I wouldn't completely throw off the table because if this is an economy that's still stable and they manage to stabilize the banking sector, once again, all the depositors are safe. And if you look at inflation math and it tells you that year-over-year -year numbers are going to start to creep back higher, you know, start June or July, 
I think the Fed may have to say we have to do a little bit more. So, I, I mean, that's one of the biggest risks in the market that I think, you know, March may be a pause, maybe it's 25 basis points, but then there's huge repricing, you know, kind of in the back half of the, the year in the bond markets that may have to happen. Would you invest in financials or urge people to do so today? Uh, and I, I ask you this, yeah. not because of perceived, you know, risk, but because of the changing landscape, maybe more regulation maybe a higher interest on deposits, which changes the whole net interest margin game in and of itself and thus the profitability of banks. So here's things that I would do or would not do. I would not try to catch the falling knife in regional banks because there's commercial real estate risks. There's still the net interest margin pressures. There's the fact that they're not as liquid and the capital ratios are not nearly as good as the large GCIP banks. So I would not catch that falling knife. However, if you look at investment grade uh, corporates, financials, for example, the spreads have widened out. They're trading close to 6%. This is a high quality asset. I would absolutely look there. And the last thing, Scott, if, you know, whether it's zero basis points or 25 basis points, the Fed may have to sort of, you know, pause or consolidate here, which means it's good for tech. 